and we'll get started. So in this presentation, we're going to start by giving an overview of the DRS along with what's changing and why. We'll go over some important employer reporting terms and introduce you to some new ones that you'll be seeing in the new system. Uh, we'll talk about active member data reporting primarily, uh, go over the ins and outs of that process and, and uh, remitting the contributions and vouchers later on in the month. Uh, we'll go over setting up accounts in the new system and other related topics, and we'll wrap up the speaking part of the presentation with some slides at the end to additional resources uh, that uh, will help through the transition. Uh, please be aware this is an overview to bring you up to speed on the basics of navigating the new system and some of the key changes from the way you currently report. We will be providing additional written instructions on specific activities within the DRS before you start using it for real uh, in the fall. So as you know, each month employers send data to NHRS. Uh, the integrity of this data is crucial to our ability to administer retirement benefits. We use the data to use for a number of factors shown on this slide, and we truly appreciate your efforts uh, and of all of our participating employers to report this information to us. So why is the DRS changing? That's a very valid question, and it's, it's a fairly straightforward answer. Well, we're in the process of upgrading our pension administration database, which is known as Pension Gold, uh, and the data reporting system, or DRS, is a component of Pension Gold. The current version of the DRS has been in operation since the early 2000s, and that's that's quite a while for any software these days, and it was time to move to a new platform. So NHRS staff has been working on this, this transition to the, to the new uh, software version for a number of years now. We started back in January of 2019 and have been working with the vendor on developing, programming, and testing all of the components of uh, of the product. Um, now we're moving on to the phase where we're rolling out the employer facing piece of it, the DRS. And we started uh, training sessions back in June and we'll continue them through September, probably add a few more in early October for stragglers if there are any. And after we get through this training, we'll be scheduling training for retiree reporting and retiree insurance reporting for insurance vendors. The next big step after the training phase is what's called parallel processing. And this occurs in October and November, during which time we're having employers submit their monthly reporting both in the current DRS and in the new DRS. Yeah, we realize this is a big ask, but it's really the only way for us to compare the inputs to ensure that the new system is doing everything it's supposed to do. During this time, the current system will remain the system of record. In December, we'll go live to the new system and that will be the only system you'll be using. I going think he's forward. down with Jim. Please mute your phone. Yeah. I can't hear it. Thanks. I muted the phone, Bob, but please keep your phones muted throughout the presentation. Thank you. So here are some differences in uh, the current version and version three that you'll be looking forward to uh, come uh, October. Uh, first off, new hires will now be reported uh, via web entry uh, instead of through the paper enrollment. Uh, terminations will be reported similarly, so we'll be phasing out the paper enrollment and termination forms. Uh, DRS users will have the ability to view and clear multiple exceptions at one time. Uh, pay periods and pay dates will be set up for each employer by pay frequency. And the payment voucher fields will automatically populate with the dollar amounts from your posted reporting. So once your file is posted, you will um, won't have to okay, keep so that information in again. So there are a lot of terms associated with the DRS, as you're aware of, and, and uh, that you'll see in this presentation. So we've got a slide listing most of them here. We also have a glossary on the website at that link I put into the chat. And if you just joined and don't see that link, I'll be putting it in later on as well. 
Uh, some new terms uh, you're going to be hearing or seeing is uh, PGV3, which is our shorthand version of the new pension and administration system. Um, so we're going to we're going to be saying that. So I want you to know what that means. Uh, you know what a batch is, uh, but there's a new term batch card. This is just sort of a graphical display in the new DRS of your current and future batches. So it's sort of an easier way to jump off and do things within that batch. Um, trial. Uh, right now we have two processes that a file goes through. When you submit it, it goes through the file validation process and the file edit. Uh, and trial is a combination of both of those processes at the same time, so a little more streamlined. Subgroup is the way members are reported under the plan in which they're enrolled. So, for example, employee political subdivision, fire political subdivision, etc. Unscheduled batch is a new feature in the system that uh, Joy will be covering later on in the presentation. These are batches outside of your regularly scheduled batches where you can submit uh, information. And finally, tier. And this is a newer, more accurate way to refer to the varying benefit levels and employer reporting requirements based on somebody's vested or date or date of hire. So this, these tiers, references to tiers will replace the vested by and hired by indicators in the current version. And we have a separate slide about tiers right here. What you'll see is, uh, you know, since 2011, uh, when the legislature made significant changes to our statute, uh, benefit eligibility, pension calculations, and, and whether certain types of pay were reportable to NHRS have become dependent on a member's vested date or hire date. And there's different requirements uh, for three mm -hmm. levels, members vested prior to 1-1 of 12, members in service prior to 7-1 of 11, and not vested prior to... Um, Excuse me, just muting someone again. Um, members in service prior to 7-1 of 11 and not vested prior to 1-1 of 12 and members hired on or after 7-1 of 11. So in the new system, instead of the check boxes, you're gonna see these members referred to as tier A, tier B or tier C. Uh, there are a handful of people and you may not have any on your payroll who will show up as tier AC. This is a small subgroup of people hired on or after 7-1 of 11 who became vested prior to 1-1 of 12. So this is the page uh, showing what the new DRS login screen looks like. Uh, during parallel processing, we will have links to both versions of the DRS on our website. And once parallel is complete and we go live in December, the links to the old DRS will be removed. So once you log in, uh, you're going to see a new um, summary page. We call it a dashboard uh, right at login, and it's got a number of features on it that we're going to walk through on the next few slides. So over on the left-hand side, you have the um, links to do different tasks in the system. Uh, this is similar to the way it's laid out now, just a different color scheme. And what these pieces are in a little more detail are under employer account. Uh, this is where you can view your account summary and balance, submit payment vouchers, request refunds or penalty waivers. Uh, employer reporting is where most of the action happens every month. This is where you will be um, reporting uh, your files, correcting exceptions, uploading any necessary documents. And you also have a vested verifier tool to look up uh, what's um, if somebody is vested or not. Retiree reporting was added to this portal in the new system. Currently, they're two separate interfaces, but we've added them to the menu. Uh, still, still only going to be doing that once a year, um, but you have have the links uh, right at your fingertips now. Account adjustments is where you can fix certain errors to a member's record, um, such as salary continuance, erroneous con contributions, et cetera, and, or upload wage correction files after an audit. And Joy's gonna talk a little bit more about account adjustments and how those will work for you later on in the presentation. And then finally, uh, we have reports. Uh, where you can run all the reports available to validate information contained in your batches. Um, we also have a contact us link and a help menu. It's a pretty uh, detailed help menu, so it, it should be a good reference for you once you start uh, navigating the new system. In the middle of the page, 
under recent batches, you can view the status of current batches, whether they're submitted in error, corrected, rejected, et cetera, as well as your next scheduled batch, uh, and most recently posted and balanced batch. So you'll have these little cards where you can use as a jumping off point to go into those batches and make any adjustments to check anything you need to. Employer communications is where you're going to see the automatically generated notifications uh, sent to employers. You'll get an email saying you'll have a new notification, and these are all going to be in one place uh, on the, uh, the dashboard screen. Over on the right hand side of the dashboard, the employer account section displays your next reporting due date, outstanding balance, if any, last payment and amount, next payment due date if known. So some just sort of at a glance uh, information uh, for quick reference for you. The association sec sec section uh, displays the num your folks on your staff who have access to the DRS for different things. So they're all listed under the representatives tab under association. So again, the dashboard is more of sort of a quick reference jumping off rather than having to toggle back and forth uh, within the system as you currently have to do. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Joy to take us through the next few slides. Hello, everyone. I'm going to start this off by talking about the employer reporting workflow. So this chart shows a simplified version of the process a file goes through once it's been reported to NHRS. On the employer side, the employer submits their file, which crosses over the wall into the NHRS side. The file will go through a trial process. This process will check for formatting errors in the file as the XML validation tool would do and check for any exceptions within the file. If there are no errors found during the edit process, the file will post or be accepted. If there are errors, also known as exceptions, the employer is notified via email. And then once the exceptions have been cleared, the file will post. To report by web entry, employers must click on the summary screen and then click on the card for the batch which needs to be submitted. So as Marty had mentioned before on the terms, one of them was batch card. So where it's circled on the screen, those are your batch cards. On this screen, you would select copy prior detail for the batch. You would then click source batch and click on next. What we're doing here is copying the batch details from a prior batch, which essentially in version two, you guys would know as a new from. This will populate your current batch. This way, employers won't need to manually type all of the information in each month. You would then enter the report end date and then click update batch detail. Review the batch detail, which includes the pay period information. And then you would click initiate copy process. Then you find the batch that you're working on and click view. You then click on view members. And then from here, you'd go down the list of your members and click on detail for each one. Um, and then obviously be careful not to click delete, which is right next to it, because you don't want to delete the person off your batch in error. In the members pay period details, you update each pay period to the wages and contributions that each member should have and then you click update. 
So I just want to point out that also an exciting feature that I feel is going to be great for those who do web entry is that wages and contributions are all on the same screen. So you won't no longer have to go back and forth on two different screens. If you look in your bottom left hand corner, you can see the salary and the contributions. Once you've finished, you'll return to the batch maintenance screen and click on submit batch. You'll notice that the current status of the batch now says submitted. If you get a notification that your file has rejected, it means there were errors found during either file processing or file edits. There are many reasons why a file might um, reject, but some of the common reasons are listed on the slide. If your file rejects, you can overwrite it by uploading a new file. So you could just re-enter your file. Here is an example of a rejected file. This is the exceeded threshold tolerance, which means that 35% or more of the file contained exceptions. When you have that large of a percentage of exceptions, it usually means that there's a problem with it. Reporting exceptions are errors identified in a file during the DRS editing process. If you have any exceptions in your file, you will receive a notification. And again, if 35% or more of the total records in a file have errors, then the whole file will reject. And just like in V2 going into V3, files must also be posted free of exceptions by the 15th of the month in order to avoid penalty. Here are some examples of some common exceptions that employers can clear. We will have step-by-step -step instructions on how to clear some of the most common types of exceptions that will be available before the start of parallel processing in October. If you receive an email that your file has exceptions, you can view the exceptions by logging into DRS. From there, there's two ways to get to your exceptions. You can either click on the left-hand screen um, in your like menu, your gray area, uh, sorry, your gray area menu screen and click on exceptions, or you can click on the batch card where that little drop down arrow is and the box correct exceptions will pop up and you would click on that. From there, it will bring you to this screen so you can click on review to look at and fix exceptions. You'll notice that there's a delete button on the left hand side of the exception list and we just want to make a note that this is similar to the last delete I spoke to where this is very rarely used. And if you push that delete, you might delete the member completely off of your report. So you might wanna call or just make sure that that's what you're trying to do. Here's an example of how to view and clear the salary variance exceeded exception. This exception will occur if wages reported for a member are significantly higher than what's been previously reported for them. And what I mean by significantly higher, the system flags anything above 500%. This is usually because of stipends or balloon checks. Um, also, just to add to that, sometimes it's also like a 500, that, um, excuse me, a 500, 500% percent decrease. So it can also happen if there's a decrease, a much smaller check than what's normally reported. From this page, the employer can read a description of what the exception is and then click on the exception card to access the page where you can fix it. 
To clear this exception, you select the reason for the variance from the dropdown and click update. So as you know, in current V2, salary variance is an exception that normally you as the employer cannot correct. So you're either calling or emailing us and we're the ones that need to clear it. The great thing about going into V3, you have the control back to you to be able to clear that exception yourself. So you just would do that arrow pointing down in the box that says salary variance reason, that box will pop up with all the selections as to why you have a salary variance. You would select one of those and then you would go down to update that's circled in red. After you correct your exceptions, you can click on the elongated oval shape under the exception card to mark it as corrected, or you can go back to the exception screen where all the exceptions are listed. You check the box next to the person and click on mark as corrected at the bottom of the page. The exceptions must be marked as corrected or they will not be picked up during the next trial process. And then I'm handing it back to Marty. Thank you, Joy. So uh, as noted earlier, um, we're not going to be uh, accepting um, requiring paper enrollment forms anymore. You'll be enrolling your new members in the file uh, monthly via web entry. During parallel processing in October and November, we still will be asking for the files. And after that, you'll be enrolling them through the file. So that how that's going to work is uh, once you, um, if you have a new hire to add to your batch, um, you're going to hit um, add the new hire by clicking on the batch card in your dashboard. Uh, and when the next screen opens, click on view uh, to uh, open the appropriate batch and then click on view members. So this is bringing you to your current batch and list of people on it. So after that, um, you would click add. So you're putting in that new member and a blank screen for that member is going to pop up. Uh, you'll enter the member's information in each category, um, as well as pay period, salary, um, demographic information, and then click insert. So you'd, you've just added that person to the file. So they're in the file, that's done. So we do have a question that comes up in these trainings before what happens to the uh, beneficiary form and the um, copies of a social security and or birth certificate that we ask employers to gather from the members and send in to us. We're still uh, looking to get that information from you. We appreciate you providing the beneficiary forms to the members. Um, what's gonna happen now, rather than sending those first before we can add the person into the system on our side, you'll be you'll be putting them in the monthly report in real time. And once this file has posted, so it's clear of, cleared of exceptions and it's posted, uh, that member is now in the system as, as one of your employees. So at that point, you can go to the main menu and click on the upload documents link in the navigation menu. Uh, and this will allow you, you can search for that member by name or by so, full social, and then you can upload all of those pieces right directly into that member's record uh, through the DRS rather than having to email them securely, fax them, mail them, however you get them to us now. So it's it's a more secure process. It's also more efficient. So uh, you know that's what we're hoping to to uh, to move to going forward. Similarly with termination forms, um, you know, those are the forms we send you asking for all those final pays and recent pays and things like that. Uh, we're going to move away from those forms. We're going to still require them through early 2024 just to make sure everything's valid in the system because it deals with finalizing retirement benefits, but we'll be looking to move away from those. And the way you would report a termination through the file is you upload that member they were you know, on your prior batch and in the last uh, pay period that they worked, click on the member detail and then go in and put in a termination date for that person. So if you had somebody who is working through this pay period and tomorrow is their last day, when you're reporting uh, the file next month, you'd put in, you know, 8.30 of 23 is the termination date. There's a drop down to indicate a termination reason and then click update. So what, what that's going to do, it's going to tell the system that this person has been terminated. So 
if you have trailing wages for this person or um, if they're a TRA member, if you have, you know, unused leave balances that that go that they contribute and you contribute onto the retirement system. Next month, when you send those, the system's going to pick up that they're post termination wages and uh, you'll be able to uh, assign them like you would on the paper term form now. So it's a little, again, a little more efficient and one stop shopping to get that information into the system. Uh, I'm going to turn it back over to Joy to cover payment vouchers. To submit a payment voucher to NHRS, you would select the voucher button in the menu. Note that there are two types of payment vouchers. Scheduled vouchers are created automatically and associated to a specific batch number. Unscheduled vouchers are created manually by the retirement system, and they're not associated to any one batch. Unscheduled batches can be used for payments not related to a batch or a reporting cycle. Here is an example of what you will see after clicking that view button. You'll notice that there's a breakdown of payment by tier, group, and subgroup, as well as the payment amount total. So I just want to note here that in current V2, you're having to fill out your own payment vouchers and either emailing the fund or mailing it with your check or your um, or after um, you do your ACH. But in V3, once you've cleared your exceptions and your report has posted, the voucher is automatically filled out for you. So as long as you're paying that payment amount total in the bottom right hand corner, then it would match your report and you would be at a balance of zero. When the voucher is generated and all voucher detail is saved, it can be submitted simply by clicking the submit button. If the amounts match, the voucher status will say submitted. Once a voucher is submitted, it cannot be modified. However, if any changes need to be made, employers can click a reset link, which will put the voucher back into a status of scheduled or unscheduled. If the amount does not match the sum of the voucher detail amounts, an error will display. After the payment is made, if the employer thinks they've overpaid, you can use reports to help locate an error that caused overpayment. Just like in V2 going into V3, contributions are due to NHRS by the 25th of the month. We recommend that all employers use ACH to send payments to NHRS. We continue to partner with Citizens Bank to utilize NHRS QuickPay, which is our online bill pay function that facilitates employer contributions by ACH at no cost to you. Payments can be scheduled in advance to post right before it's due, and it's safe, secure, and free. To learn more about QuickPay, see the NHRS QuickPay page on our website. If you already use QuickPay, you'll notice a slightly different interface this fall as we're adding a field for batch number to improve payment tracking. Employers can fix certain errors in a member's account through the account adjustment link in the main menu. You would click on the account adjustment link in the menu if you have erroneous contributions, salary continuance, or a salary pay item correction that you must add. Once you do, a box will appear. You'll first have to start by clicking on the word browse and select the member that needs the account adjustment. And you would enter the SSN and name. Then you must select the type of account adjustment you are trying to make. So then to break down the different types, erroneous contributions is when you need to adjust already reported pays because you find that they were overstated or you need a refund that happened during your already posted regular monthly batch. Then there's salary continuance, and this is for when you need to add or report a salary continuance outside of the regular monthly batch reporting. And lastly, salary pay item correction, which is normally based off an audit finding where you need to move salary buckets, like for example, moving base to comp over base or comp over base to base. There are reports um, similar to the PGV2 ones, 
Um, employers can utilize reports in version three. Reports can help in identifying discrepancies, viewing prior batch information, displaying member records and more. On this slide, we've highlighted a few reports that we think will be handy to employers. The employee listing report shows current employees. It can either show all current active employees or it can be filtered to show a specific hire date range. The employer account activity, activity report shows the receivable payment and refund transactions for an employer. Employers can filter this report to show a specific plan, batch, date range, or fiscal year. The employer reporting and voucher numbers report shows batch numbers and voucher numbers assigned to scheduled batches and payment vouchers for a fiscal year. And then Marty's gonna take it over from here, but I'm just gonna look at Judy's question real quick. And she said, sometimes I find there is a one to five cent difference in rounding between my software and yours. How should we override or balance this difference? So again, according to what you are reporting to us, and once the exceptions have cleared, technically what you've reported should match, your payment should match what you reported. I can tell you that V3 will not accept an underpayment of that one to five cent difference, but it will take an overpayment of one to five cent difference. Okay, thank you, Joy. Um, so how are you gonna get into this new system? Uh, it's kind of an obvious question. Uh, existing users who are currently in the DRS version two uh, will be able to use their sign-on credentials to set up account in the new version when it becomes available. So uh, you will be able to um, use your username and password and your uh, email associated with the account uh, to initiate a setup process in the new system. If you have a new user coming on board, a new hire, somebody who's moving from another department who's going to be involved in reporting, they're going to need to, uh, you're going to need to submit a authorization request form on their behalf that's very similar to what you're doing currently with the uh, new system. And that, and in those cases, that person is going to get an email from NHRS with a link to set up their account and a unique access code in the email, and they'll have 48 hours to do that, or they'll need to request a new account setup uh, link. So one thing we're happy to announce, and it's it's coming fairly soon, is we're looking to provide a test environment next month uh, for employers to familiarize themselves with the new interface. We're referring to this as the sandbox. And this is for anybody who wants to log in and kind of tool around with the with the software, click on the links, uh, check out how, how it all works. Um, this is a, it's a copy of the uh, system as of the end of July. So anything you change or do in the sandbox isn't going to affect anybody's members rec members record or anything like that. It's just sort of a a place where uh, you can go in and, and um, play around and get used to the new look and feel uh, once the sandbox is available we'll be sending you a email with instructions on how to set up an account in the sandbox it's going to be the same steps that you would do to transfer your existing account uh, you know into the new system when that becomes live and that's probably going to become uh, available in october but through september you'll have this the sandbox sandbox option for anybody who's more of a hands-on learner and wants to play around a little bit with the system uh, we've got a test group of employers who are uh, accessing it this week, and if everything um, works well with them, we're going to be rolling it out to everyone next week. So look for emails on that in the near future. Um, to keep you up to date on things with this project, we've created uh, a, a specific section of pages on our website under the Operation Granite Wave heading uh, that you can visit to get project updates, download documents, uh, these slides uh, and other handouts, recorded versions of these presentations are going to be on that page. So um, just again, as a resource to um, to get you through the next several months. Other resources, if you have any questions about the project um, between now and um, the next few months, email pgv3drs at nhrs.org 
or call the number shown. Uh, once uh, reporting starts during parallel processing, uh, it's the same phone number and same email you use now to reach out to us uh, with assistance uh, for exceptions. Uh, this is going to be the same staff here. They're trained on both systems and they'll be helping you through the transition. If you're having trouble setting up your account, um, you already need a new link because it expired. Uh, there's a phone number and email for the account setup issues. Once you're in, use the exceptions uh, phone number and email, but just trying to get in if you're having trouble, uh, the support number and email are for that. Uh, we have, as you know, an employer resources page already on the site, and that still has a lot of the uh, current instructions for the, the existing system. We'll be moving those off come December and replacing all that with the uh, the resources we have for the new system. But right now we've got them in two separate places, so it's easier to toggle back and forth. So that does bring us to the end of the presentation.